All right, welcome back. So in this lesson, we're going to take the next step after gesture now, and we're going to start working with the volumetric uh, figure. So uh, as the name implies, it's the 3D realization of our model. Gesture then is two-dimensional, two so I'll put over here gesture, okay? So very much a 2D approach, that's that beginning approach, and now we want to move to the next step, which is the volumetric right figure. And <clears throat> as that volume implies, that's the 3D volumet volumetricization of the figure, or you I've heard it called mannequinization, um, uh, or, or many different uh, approaches to that. Now, one of the uh, artists that we'll look at and think about and talk about with this technique is going to be Cambiasso. Luca Cam C A M B A B I A S O. Luca Cambiasso. And Italian Renaissance auto, uh, artist, middle to late Renaissance artist, and he perfected the technique of doing individual beginning studies, gesture studies. Um, compositional studies for, for multiple figure paintings by using a very very much a boxy technique for figures and we'll take a look at that. Uh, those images, I'll, I'll pull that up in a moment. I'll keep it up as we draw to as well. Matter of fact, why don't we go ahead and pop it up now and I'll, I'll show you that. So this idea, remember that gesture, okay, before it is now direction so we get this nice rhythm, right? and move at these undulating C curves, right? So we get C curves, we get S curves, meaning they curve around like an S shape, okay? And they undulate up and down to these beautiful kind of rhythmic curves that give us direction. Well, the next step is to come along and say, okay, what, what happens after direction and what's the flow of the forms that work in conjunction with that. Well, so we can see boxes here, right, <clears throat> working in the direction of our gesture that later on could be anything from arms and hands and, and head, etc., and so on, or they can be a tube or a cylinder going in this direction, right? So we could have this moving over like that. So now we have a cylinder, or maybe the cylinder is going the opposite way. So I've got videos in the basics section that go over this in its rudimentary form like I'm doing now. So essentially, also, we're going to be using our three best friends or our three 3D forms and solids with this idea of forms and solids. And they are, of course, the sphere, but in reality, I'm going to draw the sphere, okay, you see that, but in reality, there's really not much on the human figure, right, that is, that is spherical, like this, right, most of that is, is pretty much cartoony, so really, what we see on the model is more kind of an egg form, kind of like the sphere, right, but a little bit more like a chicken egg, if you will. So like that. So we see a lot of that on the model. Calves, forearms, the head is an oval. So it's really kind of ovaloid, isn't it, right? So we have this, this kind of thing going on. Of course, it has a contouring approach, right, like, like that, right? So we have that. So we have our volumes and our saws. So we have the sphere, we have the egg form. Right, and then we have, of course, our box form over here. We can draw that just as a way to say we know what we're doing and using. Okay, so we have this box form here and here. <clears throat> we'll bring that down and over. Everybody knows how to draw a cube. If you don't, you want to. You probably want to go back to the basics and and make sure you have that you know down a little bit further. That's going to be important. Right, and then you have, of course, the cylinder form, which I'll draw. I'll draw this here on top of some of this here. 
right? We can bring that cylinder down, and it's that wonderful representation. You'll probably find that the cylinder is going to do, for those of you that are beginning in drawing the figure, it's going to, going to be a nice symbol to use for a lot of your, your figure studies in, with the volumetric figure. But I'll say this is that the box really gives us a better version overall than the model. Even though it's a little bit more arbitrary, as you can see in the, the Cambiasso images that I have up. But the, the big thing here, and what we're really looking for, is what I'm emphasizing right off of this corner, is that this is a 90 degree reproduction in this image. So this whole area right here, that's 90 degrees. Even though it's in two-point perspective, it doesn't look uh, like 90 degrees, but it is in perspective. And that tells us when we have a plane change from a, uh, a form like a thigh or the side of an arm or a finger even, the digits of fingers or toes or your head, that it's more conclusive when we use boxes than often when, than when we use a cylinder or uh, uh, in, uh, an egg form, or certainly a spherical form like so. And the only reason why is, I know it's not as natural, that's for sure, but we're not necessarily getting to the natural figure yet. And that's important to note, is that what we're doing is we're still using our symbols, gesture 2D, and now our volumetric symbols for 3D, used with our forms the cylinder, the cube, the sphere, and now the egg form. So those are important aspects to know. Okay, so the next thing you're going to want to know is, well, how do I use this? What's the next phase? And how do I get to that, that can be also like idea of drawing the figure model? And so let's, let's practice that. And let's pop up now the, this beautiful Bernini. This is what we're going to make a study from this. We're going to slow this technique down and spend this video thinking about the volumetric figure, cambiasso, and reducing now the complexity of this complex uh, figure pose, this Renaissance, actually Baroque Bernini, into a mannequinized or volumetricized model. And your job is going to be to learn how to do this through repetition in time and be able to do this with live poses, uh, photographic poses, drawing from sculpture, and also drawing from your imagination. Both of these techniques, gesture and volumetric figure together, work really well from imagination. And I'll show you and demonstrate that you know, at, a later, at a later time too as uh, as well. So let's start out now with our pose here and we've got that up, we've got the cambianso as our study. We can use cambianso for a lot of things. So let's start out with first our gesture. Let's start out with opening up our gesture and our composition. So the first thing we see is that Bernini head right. It's very much tilted so we'll, we'll play off that in a kind of oval, maybe a box kind of a boxy rectangle first, and then we can change it later on. So remember, we're going to keep this fairly light and loose. We'll start out with that head. Then we're going to come through, find that design line. Look at that beautiful design line all the way down and through this undulating curve here, repositioning the center all the way down to about the pubic, bottom of the pubic region, which gets us to about the hip area. Notice the strong diagonal of the hip. Okay. Look at the curvy flow now of the shoulder to shoulder axis here and here. Okay. Then we can start to fly the armature flow from the leg here to the knee, down through the leg, right, and all the way down to the foot. We'll pull his foot back pretty good ways back in too, right? So we have that coming through. Maybe this goes a little higher. Up and through. Down and through to the foot. Over. <clears throat> and we'll find knee to knee in through here. That is how we can pull that knee up. That nice design curve. So we have this nice design line here, but it keeps on flowing till that knee up and through higher. 
and then we can curve over and find that lower foot to the leg down in through there. I might get cut off just a little bit through there. And then we'll come over, find that gesture through to the elbow, coming through the shoulder. Kind of mark the elbow just really quickly where that joint changes. When you have a joint change, you're going to change direction. Then you're going to find that this is an image of David, David and Goliath. <coughs> coming through as he's thrown the rock from a slingshot over and through. And then we're going to have that hand wind up somewhere right in through here. Very simple kind of gesture pose. Now, notice how we've got this flow through here and then we counterbalance it, okay, by the, the arm coming back the other way, which is really pretty nice. Okay, and we don't see the other arm. And then the cloth and then the bag of rocks kind of pulls us in the other direction and it kind of tallies up over and through here. We'll kind of we'll leave that. We won't probably use that much from now later on. So we have that. So now we have our gesture. So now we have our 2D figure laid out. Now we want the 3D and that's the volumetric part. And that's where Cambiasso, right, comes into major play. So I'm going to use all boxes for this drawing, okay? All right, so we're going to take, we'll start with the head first, and we'll come up into here. We want to start to look at this as a box. Now, we've got a tilted head, um, and it's tilted back, but we're at a position where we still see a little bit of the top of the head, right in through here to here, okay? So what we can do is we want to see the top of that box a little bit. Well, how do we do that? Well, we've got here, and we need to see a little bit of this, Okay, a little bit of that coming back. You can see there. If you want to use your a hard edge or an edge like so, totally fine too. You can do that as well to get that edge in through crisp. You want to keep this pretty sketchy and clean, but but you can use a little bit of a hard edge too. It's through there. You can do it afterwards. Kind of freehand that, and then use your use your edge later. So now we've got a nice head. Okay, located, located in there. Okay, this technique we could also pick back up in the 1920s and 30s in Russian art called the constructivists, and they worked right around the Bolshevik Re Revolution uh, for a while in that area. All right, so now we can bring down the neck, and we're going to keep these boxes. Now I know it's curved, right? It's kind of like a tube. So watch this. The neck is kind of like a cylinder. So the first thing we'll do is we'll make it a tube. Okay, we can use these. We can use our cylinder, right? Okay, and we can use our box. But if we're, we tell ourselves, okay, I want to use all boxes, but we can still use the cylinder first and then wind up with the box after that. So we can see that's a rounded form here, but we want to make that a side plan. So we can see this now more as a box here. Right in through here we see the side and this transfers over in the front to the other side. About right in through there. See? Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's start to take on more of the top of the figure. And we learn more about gesture too as we do that. Notice that the difference in the colored line stays clean for me. And if I go off and have a cup of coffee or lunch or dinner or whatever, I can come back and the idea is still there. And then we can work our volumes on top of it. So let's see this top now. We can come across the top of this area right in through here of our Bernini. Okay, he's really angled off in through there, so we can see we can throw that in there. Okay, we can have that at the top of the shoulders. You see that? that boxy form starting to emerge right in through here. So we have that. Okay, we can close that in like so. Okay. Now the center of this form is all the way here. I'm going to use it back again, our gesture color. Right in through here, all the way over. It's pushed over. And then we start to see about right in through here where that the belly button is. See how far the center moves? It undulates all the way over. Kind of loops in through here. I'm going to mark it right in through here. And that's going to get us down where the bottom of the pubic region 
the, monster, the pubic area would be about right in through here. And I'll mark where those pelvic areas would be, the, the cranial, the, uh, not cranial, but the tips of the, uh, the pubic uh, the, uh, crest there would be right in through there of the, uh, of the uh, <coughs> pubic region. Okay, right in through there, so we have that. Okay. Now we're going to come back over and want to simplify this through. It twists a little bit. So we're going to say, okay, so we see this coming through a little bit, and we want to twist and turn this a little bit too. Okay, so we have that. So we have that twist, we have that turn, and then we have this coming down like so. So we have this little movement in through there. So we get a little bit also now of the side. So I'm going to change this like so, so we can see this side of the box coming through. So see how I went, and this is a good lesson, I went and altered that as well coming through here to make this change especially right up and through there to keep that congruent to our forms. Okay, We want to keep it simple, but we want to keep it flowing. Also, we want to make our forms flow in together. We don't want to make them so stiff because we want to keep that gesture alive, right? We want to make them flow together. And that's part of what we're trying to do here. So as we come out of that side view here, okay, this is a strong view, they connect back up, right? And start to come together to contract a little bit. So we have this coming down and over. This is a box. We can see a little bit more of the front down this way. And of course now we see a little bit of this side up and over. And so, you know, when I say boxes, they are modified. They're, they're think of them also as living foam pieces that can be slightly bent and malleable. They're not like hard wood that is stiff, but they're our, our volumetric uh, volumes and solids are very much malleable and bendable and movable, okay? All right, so we have this coming down like so, and then we're going to finish this volumetric form off, kind of this boxier form, like so. Here's our center, and then back down, right in through there, okay? Now we're going to work on to come out to the leg. So we're going to pull that leg down, we'll catch our gesture again, feel that come down, the knees a little bit higher, in through here, okay? So now we have our direction. Remember our direction, our arrow that tells us where it's going, and then with scale and proportion with gesture, okay, tells us our length of our leg, which is a little bit higher attached, actually, about right in through here. So here's our length to that kneecap, our patella, about right in through there, which gives us a lot of leeway. Now, um, remember when we, we conceived it at first as a cylinder, you can do that again, but change it to a box to give you an even more volumetric feeling with respect to 90 degree angles. That's what's so important in thinking about the figure, what Cambianza taught us. So we'll come in through here and we'll say, okay, this is a cylinder coming down. Here's our cylinder right here. Right now it's tapered. So it's wider here, right? At the thigh, inner thigh. And as it comes down to the knee, into that region of the knee and the, and the uh, femur, the tibia, fibia, it starts to uh, taper off. Now, so this is kind of like a cylinder here, right? And the cylinder here. But let's don't leave it like that. Right in through here, I want you, this is tough to see, but about right in through here is the break to make it a rectangular cube. About right there on the outside of the leg. Okay, this gets shaved. We can take it, let's take it back this way. And let's take this down like so this way. And then we can make a, we'll make a stronger line with it. We'll make it into kind of a box here. Okay. And that gives us a taper. So we want that realistic look, but we also want that volumetric look, which is kind of two different things happening at once. And so I'm going to tone down 
this side, I'll let a little atmosphere in there too to give it some atmosphere, give it an atmospheric quality. And we'll tone this down right into here, and then we'll make this side a little darker. Okay, bring that, we can bring some reflected light in through here. And see how that gives us a nice realization of these forms. And this is a little contouring here to make us feel that plane change. So we feel this 90 degree change, which is awkward for a human figure. Now we can bring this together to make that smoother. That's awkward, right? These are awkward. We don't necessarily see all this on the live model. That's the point. The point is to be able to visualize this, to have a better chance at making a better crafted drawing. Okay? So let's take this other thigh. Okay, I'll go back to my gesture color. And so here was our initial gesture, which is still pretty good. See how we've got him leaning over? Notice that the knee, from this knee to the other, look how the difference, that's horizontal and vertical and diagonal alignment. Okay, that's covered in another video. So look at the difference in through here as he's pushed his leg further, further back. So we can take that. We know that that gives us that gesture, that middle armature, that loose middle armature, not the outside, but the inside, gave us the length and also the movement. Now we can take this idea, and if you want, we can go with a cylinder again as it comes up here and attaches, right? to the, to the, uh, the uh, pelvic girdle region, if you will. This comes back, okay, in through here. Think about that as another cylinder of the knee, and then we'll come down, okay, cylinder. Look at that graceful line that, he, that Bernini gives us right in through there, okay. Now we don't want to leave that. We've got a cylinder, but remember our idea is to use right boxes. We want to be able to use more boxes than anything. I mean, it's harder, I get it, but it will give you more power later. Okay, so let's take this thigh now, and we'll move this over, and that inner thigh is starts about right here when we start to see more shadow. Shadow gives it away. It will give you the plane break, excuse me, it will give you the plane break that you need to show the dimension or the 90 degree change, right, that you're looking for in your drawing. So we have this here curving around. You can kind of curve and you, or you can keep them uh, flatter, 90 degree if you want to as well. I'll try to flatten it out just for the sake of the drawing. Right in through there and then coming down right in through there. And so we want to keep that curve here straight, but we'll curve it a little bit just to make it feel a little bit more, more natural and more human. And then we'll take this inner thigh, okay, and we'll just, okay, shade it down. And pull it back a little bit, push it back, and make the 90 degree change more, more palatable, right? So I can contour this over to make it feel and have that change now that we want. Okay, so now let's go and finish these legs a little bit. I think I'll have to crop, that might crop off of it. This is a little foreshortened, it's a little funkier. Okay, so what we have here is we come down, here's the gesture, we get my color back. Okay, it curves from the tibia fibula right in through there, it curves over to the malleolus or the ankle right in through there and then we'll get that foot, which is kind of a triangular wedge coming down right in through here to pull that back, and of course this what will come forward from us there. As, he, as he's thrown the the uh, the rock to hit Goliath, kill Goliath, he's recoiling from that, and he's um, recovering from that that toss. Now, the first thing again, we have our cylinder, we have our box, we also have our egg form right here. Okay, remember, remember that. Basically, it's kind of a circle on the top to it. Number three. And so we can use that before we use our box form, just like we did up here with our cylinders. So we have now the, 
The uh, egg form of the calf, the gastrocnemius, and the solis, okay? So it's like this, but it also tapers into a tube. It gets thinner, so it's a cylinder. It's kind of an egg jammed into a paper towel roll, if you will, or some kind of cardboard roll. That's how I think about it. I used to say toilet paper, but it used to gross people out. So, but I just said it, so. It's like an egg jammed into a toilet paper roll. So, deal with it. How about that? Oh, well. Now, so you get that, right? And so you get this tube, okay? But we want to change it. Remember, we want to go to boxes exclusively. So, what we have here is we have the side dimension of the calf. We can box it, box it there a little bit, okay? Just enough to keep that boxy congruence. This will go over to the side here, right? We have that, okay? Have that coming down. Of course, we could contour this over like so. And this comes down, tapers, it's thinner here, right, and to there, down to the ankle, the malleolus, and over top. And now we have, of course, we have our, I'll give it some more atmosphere shading in through here. And now we have the side of our bar on our uh, ankle there, and then we can come over and grab the, now the foot, which is triangular wedge. We want to make this very simple. It's, it's folding over those bones, those cuboid bones. Here, but we're going to make mostly this wedge, okay, coming over like so. And then we get that arch and little boxy form to get the back part of the foot in through there. And we'll just throw a little shadow on it. And look at that, we have our foot now in our Cambiasso volumetric uh, figure. So let's go for now part of this one. I'll probably have to crop, crop a little bit off. Okay, so we'll tighten this up here with our figure. Now you see how definitive these plane breaks are. We know that we come across this form and then we come back over this way. That's what's so important about these drawings and about training your mind to read this material, read it all the way over and then come back across. It's really, really important to see that. All right, so we'll, we'll start out and we'll do the same thing as we see now this calf coming down here, right? So we see that over and we see the bulge of the calf here and then we see the bulge of the other side. What does that remind you of? It reminds you of the egg, right? So there's the egg form, okay, right? Remember, it's rounded like a cylinder, but it's wider like an egg. So we have that, okay? <clears throat> and then we're going to come on down to that tapering. Remember tapering? Remember that? So that's that cylinder coming down. That tapered tube, think of it as a tube now. Okay, and we knew where we were going because of our gestures, so we don't have to rethink about it, right? Rethink about our model there. So we have that working for us, coming down, and we'll find that ankle right inside there. Let's see where that ankle is about underneath that toe there, coming across maybe a little bit lower. So it's pretty good. I might be able to get this foot on. All right, so now we, we've taken, we've made a tube. Watch this. Here's our egg. Here's the egg form. All right, you see it? We'll make a little concentric circle in there. Then here's our tube. So we've got our egg jammed in our tube. It's kind of like a snake that's eaten something like a mouse or a poor mouse, right? And so it's bulging. So there's our tube. Okay, there's our tube. And here's our egg. Now we want to make that more box-like. So right in through here is the femur. That's where it changes. And about right in through here, this goes back in space here, okay? This goes back in space here a little bit to make that more boxy. And then we'll come down, make it a little bit more geometric. This will come over a little bit. We'll tighten this up and we'll keep this little angle and this will give us now the other side of our calf and lower leg. Those tendons that come down now to that foot and then go to underneath the foot and to the 
uh, proximal, medial, and distal part of the, uh, the, ph the uh, phalanges down there. So we have that, and then we'll have the foot. Now it's, it's greatly foreshortened, so we're going to straighten out just a little bit. And then it's, a, it's the triangular wedge now in front. So to simplify this, we'll take this into a nice blocky wedge, okay? Very wide, okay? We have to make it wide since it's coming at us a little bit. And then back some, right as we see that come over, okay? Just like so. Then we'll come back through and over. And then the toes, we're going to make that plane. We're going to cut all those toes off, thank God, okay? And then we're going to make that kind of a box coming down and at us, and we'll put that down this pedestal about right like that. So we've got a nice foreshortened foot slightly coming at us, and this, these are down plane where these toes are at, right in through there. And so we've got pretty much now our our um, our Bernini lower from well most of the figure now uh, kind of located in. So let's figure out now what to do with this top when we're just about there. So, <clears throat> let's pick back up at the upper area, okay? And we, what we see now with our gesture, see how light it is? See how it's, it's disappearing because we have more material on top of it. So our gesture was pretty true from shoulder to elbow. That elbow ends right about where his chest pectoral ends, right? Right about there with the elbow. So we seem pretty good with it, maybe just a little bit lower. Okay, right into we'll pick up the gesture. You can always change it. So we've got this movement, and then we've got this overturn of the brachial radialis of the lower arm, right in through there. We come over, and then we're going to see this hand in. So, you know, just a light oval, and later on we'll turn that hand into a box. And you're looking for where does it end through here? Along, it's pretty good. He, he slung, he slung that rock against Goliath, and we don't even see the other hand. arm and hand because it's tucked under, right? And it's gone back underneath there. All right, so let's figure this out, and we'll be almost done with this first lesson, this volumetric kind of lesson. Okay, put a little shadow down there, and make it make it work for us. All right, so coming over here, remember, let's. Let's start with the tube, let's conceive the tube, and then we'll turn it into a box. I think that'll be easier for you. And you can start either way. You can start at the shoulder, or you can kind of figure out the, the uh, elbow area and see that as, as the disc for the tube coming over, and the shoulder will come across. We want to get that width because it is wider at the deltoid up in through here. Where it'll attach more, right in through here, right? We see that it's not a perfect circle, but we're going to draw an arc for it. And it's all connected, all those muscles, the deltoid, the, the uh, triceps, the biceps, biceps brachialis, part of the pectoral, all that goes together. You don't have to know about that. You can do a pretty good drawing if you know a lot about gesture. Volumetric figure and scale and proportion, you can draw a pretty good figure. All right, so we'll come down. So, see how we have that too? Okay, let's finish it off though, all the way down to the hand, and then we'll box it by and, and do our uh, cambiasso, uh, our, uh, our master justice, if we will, here. So, now we'll come on over. Do you see the egg form? Number one, do you see the egg form in the bicep? and tricep. Here's the egg form here, right? Here's the head of the tricep back here. And it corresponds with the bicep uh, asymmetrically here, right? So we see that little bicep. So we've got the bicep tricep egg in the tube bulge. You'll see that all the time with the figure. We have that, okay? Then you're going to see it from the elbow. You're going to see it here from these extensors and flexors here, right? You're going to see Another bulge here of the area, the, the, um, the lower arm, it's a little wide. Can I bring that in a little bit? We'll bring a little shadow to make that a little bit narrower, like so. Take that off a little bit. So there it is right there. Remember, that's a tube going down, tapering, taper, taper that tube. 
draw that cylinder in, right here's the edge and the end of it, right in through there, there's the end of the tube, here's the top, right, here's the egg form jammed in there, okay, and let's, let's get a little bit of the uh, hand going, here's the part of the box, we're going to side of the box, over through here, okay, got the side part of the hand, like so, side part of a box coming down, could be, Okay, right in through there, and then we'll gesture out the rest of this, these digits, as he's cupping up and over. That's all we need there, and we get a little bit of the fat part of the back of the palm, right in through here, just for the sake of it, and we can group that off of there. We'll get into hands and, and feet more proper a little bit later on. Now let's boxify these. So the wrist is already naturally bo boxy. We have a little ulnal ulnar P on the outside part, so actually right here. We all have that, you can feel it on, your, on yourself, but it's a box, that's kind of the side plane, and then it goes back right in through there. So what happens is, you look closely enough, it's a little boxification about right there, okay? And that's gonna come up and over with boxify, that gets a little bit wider, and then we're gonna cut this off right in through there, and I'm going to give that the shadow plane side. So we, we went from our cylinder, and now we box this a little bit. So that means that this is the 90 degree change here and over. So watch this. 90 degrees, this wants to take us back. Take me back, take me back, take me back. Right in through, right in through there. Okay, this comes over. And we'll leave that curve to make it a little natural and through there. And then lastly up and through here is that here's where the box is. See that shadow up on the deltoid shoulder right in through here? So we'll take that. This might be easier to see it this way. Start with that deltoid. Right in through here. Coming up over. And I'm going to shade that. So you can start to see that box. Right in through there. Then we get into that bicep. And then we're going to come over and boxify it this way. Over and through and connect up there. And then we're going to shape this in and give you that box. Okay? And then this comes downward a little bit. We can curve it out. We can pull this out, pull that back, that, um, that part of the, the uh, upper rib cage. The, the uh, lat area, we can pull that back so we can see these contour lines come down for us at 90 degrees from the other. Look at that. So that shows us what we were doing there. And we get now the nice volumetric figure that we want and that we're looking for in our combi. Also, you can put, you could always put an eye line through there if you want. You can put a little bit of a center line and a little bit of the tip of the nose and through there. You don't need a lot of detail. Matter of fact, I prefer that you don't. Don't get bogged down in that. Keep it very simple. And you can still be very expressive. And the point of this, too, is to keep our gesture alive and to make every part of our drawing still be lively, even when we slow it down. That's going to be a challenge. Um, for the future, as you start to put these techniques together, you have to think about many things, and part of that is to pull them all together and then make them work for you in a way that is beautiful and rhythmic and flowy, even when you spend, you know, an hour, two hours, 10, 20, 30, three weeks, or whatever it's going to take for your drawing. And you're going to find, no matter what you're doing, whether you're a designer or a sculptor or an architect, this, these techniques are so powerful, but they're hard. Trust me, they're not easy. And my, my students tell me, and they complain about it all the time. And you know what? I totally get it. It was hard for me when I was a kid, when I was a student. It's been a long time. It's been a long time since I've, I've learned these concepts. It, they... Now they're just like second nature. It's like breathing, or it's like eating a bowl of cereal. I don't think about it, right? You just do it. But when you're first starting out, there's a lot to learn. Take it slow. Practice this. Put together gesture. Put together the volume. 
the volumetric figure, and if you can, can control your scale and your proportion, you've got something. You've got a lot there. You don't have to necessarily uh, know as much anatomy as, as I do. It's, it's not that important. It finishes off the idea of the drawing, but, but uh, you can do a lot with this. So there we go. There's your volumetric figure um, in combination with gesture. And now it's all about practice, practice, and more practice. All right, there you go. All right, so look for more videos uh, with demonstrations and gesture and the volumetric figure and the line we made coming up uh, very soon. All right. You guys take care out there, my students in YouTube land. And I'll catch you very soon. Peace. Everybody be well. And uh, take care of one another. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.